Several history books record that in late 1944 a new type of aircraft was tracked in the skies over Britain, an enemy aircraft of a new and revolutionary type to which the British had no defence. For the first time a German jet penetrated British airspace, not to bomb like so many German aircraft since 1939, but to spy. The Arado AR-234 had arrived. It is an understatement to suggest just how significant German jet and rocket-propelled aircraft were when they first appeared in the skies over bomb-ravaged Germany in April 1944. For the Luftwaffe, the jet represented a final chance to take on and destroy the huge formations of Allied heavy bombers that were laying waste to German industry and cities, and paralysing the transportation networks and fuel production. New jets, like the twin-engine Messerschmitt ME-262, had a clear performance advantage over Allied escort fighters, but were expensive to build and time-consuming to retrain pilots and develop new tactics. But nonetheless, the ME-262 was a very formidable machine. The rocket-propelled point-defense fighter, the Messerschmitt ME-163 Comet, was extremely manoeuvrable and very fast the first piloted aircraft of any type to exceed a thousand kilometers an hour in level flight, but was limited by its small fuel capacity. Germany also wished to utilize jets to power a new series of bombers and reconnaissance aircraft, and the Arado AR-234 emerged out of this speed requirement to enable the aircraft to outrun conventional piston-engine Allied fighters. When introduced to Luftwaffe service officially in September 1944, the AR-234 became the world's first operational turbojet-powered bomber, and one of its roles was long-range, high-speed reconnaissance missions, at which it excelled. And the first of these missions over Britain probably was made in August 1944, shortly before the type became fully operational. With a crew of only one, the AR-234B2, which was used mostly on operations over the UK, was 12.64 metres, or just under 41 feet long, with a wingspan of 14.5 metres, or about 47 feet. Power came from two Junkers Umo 004B1 axial flow turbojet engines, and it could also have assisted takeoff using a pair of Valta HWK 109500A1 liquid fuel jettisonable rocket pods. The AR 234's performance figures were impressive a maximum speed of 742 kilometers an hour, or 461 miles per hour, at 6,000 meters, or about 20,000 feet though they generally cruised along at about 700 kilometers per hour or 430 miles per hour. Range was just over 1,500 kilometers or 967 miles, with a service ceiling of 10,000 meters or 33,000 feet. Longer ranges could of course be achieved with drop tanks. Allied piston engine fighters couldn't intercept the AR-234 in flight as it was too fast, making it an ideal spying platform for camera-equipped reconnaissance flights. The Germans wanted to have accurate intelligence concerning Allied shipping that massed in British ports before crossing to France following the Normandy campaign. The key to slowing down the Allied advance in Western Europe was to interdict the Allied army's supplies, much of it flowing across the English Channel. The Germans were planning an inshore U-boat campaign using a new revolutionary type of submarine, the fast and difficult-to-detect Type 23 electro-boat, to allow U-boats to return to coastal waters where the older and larger conventional U-boats had been driven from earlier in the war by Allied anti-submarine warfare advances. The AR-234s would prove to be ideal reconnaissance platforms over Britain. Based at Rheiner near Osnabrück, a 234 flown by Oberleutnant Erik Sommer is recorded as having made a successful photo reconnaissance flight over southern England in the second half of August 1944. On the 10th of September, Sommer flew again over southern England, photographing the Thames Estuary and London.
These flights were also monitoring shipping as the Germans suspected that the Allies might make a follow-up invasion to that in Normandy by landing in the Netherlands. Luftwaffe air activity over Britain also continued with conventional bombers and fighter-bomber attacks, but on a much reduced scale compared with the huge attacks of the Battle of Britain and the Blitz in 1940-41. Hitler was searching for ways to attack Britain more effectively and cheaply, and in June 1944 the first V-1 cruise missiles had impacted London. These small pilotless robot bombs caused havoc, launched from ramps in France or air launched over the North Sea, and the campaign would last until March 1945, severely testing British civilian morale, causing destruction or damage to over 1.1 million properties and almost 23,000 killed or injured. Almost 2,000 flying bombs fell victim to Allied fighter planes. The V-1 campaign would be complemented by the V-2 ballistic missile offensive, the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile that used mobile launchers and were invulnerable to being intercepted in flight due to their incredibly high speed. V-2 missiles rained down on London and South East England until almost the war's end, killing or wounding a further 9,500 people and destroying or damaging tens of thousands of buildings. Britain in 1944-45 was on the receiving end of Germany's most advanced weapons, and the Arado 234 spy flights had just another facet of the high-tech machines Hitler arrayed against the UK in the last year of the conflict. The AR-234 photo reconnaissance missions from Rhiner against British targets continued. On the 5th of October 1944, the coast of East Anglia was photographed, with a second sortie mounted the following day, 6th of October. AR-234s were redeployed to Stavanger in German-occupied Norway to continue photo reconnaissance missions over Britain, now in direct support for the new inshore U-boat campaign. On the afternoon of the 23rd of March 1945, two AR-234s took off from Norway, one tasked with obtaining photographs of the coastal waters of the Firth of Forth in Scotland down to South Shields in northern England. The second AR-234 was to photograph northern Scotland only. The first mission, flown by Lieutenant Helmut Hetz, was difficult. Both aircraft needed drop tanks to reach Scotland, and Hetz made landfall north of Aberdeen, and headed towards the Firth of Forth. However, his aircraft had an overheating engine, so he aborted his mission and limped back to base. He was badly injured during a forced landing at the base, and the AR-234 badly damaged. On the 24th of March, a single AR-234 made a reconnaissance run down the east coast from Scotland to Middlesbrough, collecting possible shipping targets for the U-boats. The mission resulted in the pilot plotting 21 Allied ships proceeding independently from the ports of Berwick and Hartlepool, valuable vital intelligence that was passed to the 25th U-Boat Command to act upon. On the 1st of April 1945, British radar and spotters managed to identify an AR-234 flying off Rattray Head in Scotland. And on the 4th of April, an AR-234 took off from Wittmundhaven to scout the city of Hull and the Humber estuary, plotting many ships. It also photographed airfields in Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. A second 234 also departed Wittmundhaven, arriving over East Anglia at 9,000 metres, or about 29,000 feet, photographing the ports of Great Yarmouth and Lower Stoft but broken cloud cover made the photo-reconnaissance mission only partly successful. A third 234, due to photograph Ipswich and Harwich, aborted when a fuel transfer pump failed. A fourth aircraft also aborted due to heavy cloud cover over its targets. Two days later, on the 6th of April, an AR-234 overflew Ipswich and Harwich, but aborted its mission early due to a technical problem. Thick cloud cover also threatened a second 234 that attempted to photograph Great Yarmouth and Lowestoft. 
On the 9th of April, an AR-234 made a sortie from Schleswig, photographing Great Yarmouth and Harwich. And on the 10th of April, 1945, the last German jet sortie of the war against the British Isles occurred over Scotland, when a single AR-234 was plotted off Rattray Head, lingering for some 30 minutes in UK airspace. Undoubtedly, the photographs that were gathered during these intelligence sorties were of great use to the Kriegsmarine, but as for the inshore U-boat campaign, was it successful or not? Well, in point of fact, the campaign was a failure, the Kriegsmarine losing more U-boats, both conventional and new electro-boats, than enemy ships sunk. Royal Navy anti-submarine escort groups, in conjunction with RAF Coastal Command, had reached a peak of efficiency. The idea of interdicting Allied supply ships to help slow the Allied armies advancing east in Europe was a good one, but it didn't pay off, though the Arado 234s nonetheless managed to provide some good photo intelligence without loss to enemy fire. Today, only one Arado 234 still exists on display at the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center near Dallas International Airport in Virginia. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.